of the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America has certain questions that must be asked and answered by the pastor to be installed. And then I'll have some questions for the congregation also. But we'll start with you. Do you trust Jesus Christ? Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge Him, Lord of all, and head of the church, and through Him, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the Church Universal and God's Word to you. Thank you. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable? expositions of what scripture teaches and leads us to believe and do and will you for your be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God. I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? We be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace unity and purity of the church. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you be a faithful teaching elder proclaiming the good news and word sacrament, teaching faith and caring for people? Will you be active in the government and discipline serving in the council of the church and in your ministry will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ. And now I have some questions for the congregation. Do you, the members, members of the church, Accept Kathy Warren as your pastor, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to guide and to guide you in the way of Jesus Christ. Do you, do you agree to pray for her, to encourage her, to respect her and her decisions, and to follow her as she guides you? serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church. You promise to pay her fairly and provide for her welfare as she works among you, to stand by her in trouble and share her joys. We listen to the word she preaches, welcome her pastoral care, and honor her authority as she seeks to honor and obey Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I call on David. Kathy, this is the fun part. Or maybe I should be fair and say the most fun part. Because the other parts are fun too. But we're going to pray for you and lay hands on you. And by doing so, bind you to this congregation and they to you as you seek to follow and serve Jesus Christ, uh, to love God, to serve this community. So 
So I want to invite you actually, if you want to think, to stand there in front of the communion table. And I'm also going to invite, as I said, we're going to do a leg on of hands for Kathy. She's going to, to kneel in, uh, uh, in symbolism of her service and servitude and humility here. But I'm going to invite uh, all the ordained ruling elders uh, of the Presbyterian Church to lay hands on her as well as teaching elders and any other clergy of other um, other Christian churches also to join us for laying on of hands. Now, if you can't, uh, if you can't get to, to Kathy, you can maybe the police get to somebody you can get to Kathy. I got you. Thanksgiving, they may be empowered by your spirit 
to go, to do, to tell, to be, that they may know that you have given them a gift, and that they are called to use that gift for the healing of the world. Bless again, O oh God, this your servant, this your servants in this congregation, that may all rejoice in the glory and the gratitude we have for Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you too to take some time right now to, to welcome Kathy and her new ministry here. Like this. I happened to do the calligraphy this morning. 
We also know that while the world continues to change at warp speed, the church has resisted changing. So with Jonah, we ask, why do things have to change? Especially when we like them just the way they've always been. In his book entitled Power Search, Reverend Michael Foss states the obvious. How we have been the church is no longer effective. Further, the model of being church we all grew up in has been focused on the care of membership. And he spells out the need for the church to move from a membership model to a discipleship model, which focuses on mission. In a nutshell, it means the church must turn our focus from inside to outside. Like Jonah, we can try to run from it all, but we can sit back and see what will happen. But I believe that God is calling the church to play the role of Jonah today. So the question before us is this. Where in the story are we? Are we wanting to stay in part one of the story? Arguing with God about not wanting to go into unfamiliar territory? Or about those whom God wants to send to call people to change? Are we hiding in the hole of our churchships, in the fold of our memberships, while the world is being tossed about on the stormy seas of a fast-changing and way too violent world? Are we in the dark belly of the fish, wondering if this is the end of us? Or do we find ourselves on dry land, trying to comprehend why God continues to love us so much and continues to provide new beginnings for us? In fact, I believe God is insisting that we move into part two of this story. That we are called to go into our Nineveh-like world with the message of God's amazing love and mercy for all, to all. This is a holy mission. This is why the church continues to exist. <coughs> and this strange little story of Jonah, often thought of as a children's story, calls the church to a very, very adult response. Now I know I do not need to tutor this congregation on the subject of change. For you have just experienced about 24 months of changing faces from this pulpit. But now, now you have finally docked and you have called a wonderful pastor to partner with you, to lead you in charting a new course for how you can be the presence of Christ in this community. Does this imply there will be no more changes now that Kathy is here? Therefore, my charge to you this afternoon is really quite simple. Accept Kathy for who she is. Like you, she is a sinner of Christ's own redeeming. Care for her the way you would want to be cared for. Support her in the way she finds work best to nurture her spirit and her faith. Pray for her. Like you, she is a precious child of God with the same kinds of challenges that you face. Be open to the fresh eyes and new ideas that she's bringing. And when she wants to do things differently than you've ever done them before, trust <coughs> that she has prayed about it and believes that she is following the spirit of Christ and the will of God. Congratulations. For you have weathered the stormy seas of transition. You have successfully called a highly qualified pastor to lead you. So as you now drain the seawater from your ears, I leave you with a question that I believe we must all answer today. If we are not going where God is sending us, where are we going? Please turn with me. Creator God, we honestly seek to do your will. But when it becomes unfamiliar or different, we hesitate. We ignore you when we know, we know deep down it's you calling us to do something we don't want to do. Please, Lord, we pray that you will change our hearts in this stormy time for all our churches. Pour your blessings upon Kathy and the members of this wonderful congregation, that they will all have the courage needed to do things your way whatever that might look like, and grant them sufficient love to sacrifice their own desires for the sake of your kingdom. Then, Lord, give them a great big den of a nudge, so this community of believers might become a most fertile presence here in Target Springs.
for the seeds of your future church to grow according to your will. Amen.